this video, you will learn how to use Google Apps Script to automatically create drive folders and copy files. Let's say you have a Google Sheets file where you type in the first name of your new employee and mark what for files that you want to have copied. And now we're going to go ahead and write an automation script that will create a new employee folder and copy all of those files into that specific folder and also personalizing some of the files, at least the names of the files. So the first step is to head over into the script editor. We're naming our current project drive automation and the first function we're naming create folder and files. At the very beginning of this function that we're writing, we're going to get all of the data we need. So this is our employees folder and we need the ID of that folder. So we get the shareable link and we simply delete all of what is not necessary. And this leaves us with the ID of that file. And we're storing all of these separate IDs from these folders and these files into variables. And we're using the type of constant variables. These are immutable variables since this is something that we will not be changing. So also here for this file, we're copying the shareable link and we're pasting it using the keyboard shortcut and deleting whatever is not necessary. we will be copying three files and one folder or referencing one folder and copying three files. So this is what you see me doing here. There you go. And there's one more to go. And as you see here, all of the variable names are use camel case to signalize the new word. That is just something that you use in JavaScript. And since AppScript is essentially JavaScript, we use the same naming here. And I encourage you to do so too for your variable names. So we have all of the IDs we will be using. It's a good idea to always save from time to time by clicking on the floppy disk icon. Now we're accessing our sheet. We're using the get active sheet method for this on the spreadsheet service. And the second step is to get our actual data. So we're accessing the sheet. We say, give me the data range. So where data is contained and get those values. And that will give us a two dimensional array. And the next thing is, okay, so we have our data. Now we have to actually say, which is the first name, which is the last name and so on and so forth. So here I'm getting and storing the value of the first name in the variable of first name, get started. So the different tick boxes that you saw in the sheet, and we'll see that afterwards in a moment's time again, that is what I'm reading here tracking sheets. So if someone ticked the box, then here we would have a value. And since this is a two dimensional array, we need to use the two square brackets here. I'm being efficient and I'm simply copying the data and the empty square brackets so that I can paste them here. There you go. And if we look at our data, zero, one, and so on and so forth. Those are the values. And the first one in the array is because we're on row two. That's where Adam is written. So it's in the array one zero stands for first name and so on and so forth. Now we're creating our new employee folder and we're doing that within our employee folder. So we will be creating a new folder within our employee folder and giving it the name of our new employee. And that's what we use, whatever is stored in the variable of first name. There you go. So we're creating that folder. And then it's on to define or to check if the tick box gets started. So for that, get started Google docs. If that is checked, then read the following code, execute the following code. So get the template, get started 
and make a copy of that file and give it the following name. Let's get started. And we want to use the first name of our employee here. That's why we have to use backticks. That in front of the L is not a normal quotation mark, what you're seeing here. It's a backtick. There you go. So the first part is the name of the file and the second is where it should copy that file and that's in our new employee folder which we created on line number 15. So now we're also checking if there is a value in tracking sheet, meaning if the tick box is checked, then go ahead and get the template tracking sheet and make a copy of that. And again, we're giving a, a customized name to the file. We're using the first name, space, tracking sheet. And in order to do this, for this string interpolation to work, or I think they're called string literals actually, you need to use the back ticks so that you can use the dollar sign, curly brackets, and the variable name. And we're doing the same thing for the welcome message. So this is an, a video message that has been recorded and saved up in Google Drive. And here we're getting that template message, making a copy of it, and again, personalizing the name of this new document. And where are we copying in or copying this file to? Again, to the new employee folder. And see how as I'm writing my script, I really leverage the power of the autocomplete auto suggestion. So I really, really have to write out a lot of method names and so on. I simply start typing it and then choose it from the selected suggestions that are added. What we're doing here is setting the value complete once the th script has run through. So on the second row in the fifth column, that's what I'm saying here in get range, set the value of completed. So how will that look on our sheet? If we go back to our sheet, there you go. The status that's where completed will be written into. If we go back into a script editor, the function is perfectly fine, but now I would like to create an on open trigger so that people don't have to access the script editor in order for this script to run. Instead, they can use it um, or start it in the custom function. And this is what I'm creating now. So this is something you'll see in a lot of scripts that you access the UI from the spreadsheet app service and you create your own menu. We will be calling this new employee and we will be adding an item of the following name, create folder and files, and which function should be executed? Well, the create folder and files. And since we need the exact name, again, we're just copy pasting this using the keyboard shortcut. And once that's done, once that's done, we add that to the UI, we save it, good. And now to mimic the opening of the file, we're just gonna reload it. The script editor is closed, and this is gonna take a couple of seconds, but then new employee or custom menu will appear. So you should be able to see this now too if you're following along. Here, first name Adam, all of the files are ticked. So here, as you saw before, there is no file or no folder Adam. Since we're running the script for the very first time, it is asking us to grant permission to use Google Drive and Google Sheets. And let's have a look again at our folder. Adam is not there, why? Because asking for permission stops the script. That's why we have to run it again. And once it's finished, we will see the message, finish script. There you go, our Adam folder with the three files personalized containing his name. Let's try this out with a new employee, another name, and this time we will omit the tracking sheet. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that so that we see when it's ran through. Create folder and files. And if we go back into Google Drive, it's not there yet, so how about we refresh Google Drive? That should trigger a reload. There you go, Ella, and we're expecting two files. There you go, two files. Before you leave, 
hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our Google Apps Group video tutorials. And how about you check out our online courses under courses.saparis.io so that you can be up to speed with Apps Group in no time.